American Coast enthusiasts and all our fellow enthusiasts. I am here at the Vacoma booth at the APA 2021 show, and we are excited to give you a little bit more look into what's happening on the show floor. I am here with Ricardo Edges, for, who is the senior sales manager, and Benjamin Blumenthal, the senior engineer. So I am looking forward to some insight into Vacoma. Now, we have talked with y'all a couple times, but this show was really special because y'all won a brass ring for best new product for Fly, right? Can you tell us a little bit about Fly and why it's special? Well, there are, there are many reasons why it's special. <laughs> it's, it really is the crown uh, on our recent work. And we are, we are very pleased. We're very happy, obviously, with the recognition, the fact that we won this award. But uh, yeah, overall, it's just like a massive group effort. So much got integrated on this one project. The, the right system, the whole area, it's such a condensed area with so much going on. Several layers of construction, and then, of course, a hotel that's in there, too. So yeah, there are many reasons why this is special, not just the right system, which is a, it's a very successful prototype for us. It's our third generation flying coaster with many, many changes of all the stuff that we've learned in the recent years. And uh, yeah, we're just so pleased with the experience, but also with the overall integration and the way that we work together with the park. It's, it's just a pleasure to work with. That is wonderful. So are there any changes that the rider would see right off the bat with Fly versus the other two generations? It's launched, yeah. right? Right. What right. else would the rider notice? Well, there's a lot of changes, actually. Okay. So, one, of course, is the type of track profile that we're using, and then the type of ride layout that we try to achieve with this. So this, this ride particularly is much more focused on flying experience, so getting weightless in that vehicle and soaring through that steampunk city, more, much more than inversions and, and twists that the previous flying coasters were about. Um, and other than that, the vehicle itself, we now have a, a two-seater, basically, and uh, which makes for a lot longer train in this case, but it also adds to the experience. We have a 25 meter, 75 feet long train, which gives you a totally different ride experience from front to back. So that's one thing. Um, completely redeveloped uh, ergonomics and restraint system for this to so improve comfort during your flying experience. And then, of course, the overall experience with two launches. It's just, uh, it's just a completely different product. And will we see modifications of that for different parks with different train lanes and such to customize it to each park that might want one? Yeah, definitely. So we hope we'll see them, obviously, but uh, they can come in any shape or form. And will you be looking at some custom elements that can be integrated differently for different parks too? Yeah, of course. Yeah, The vehicle's just built to deal with a whole range, of course, as all ride vehicles are, of forces. So we can do different things that you've seen in Fantasia and then you also had Fan Summerland, you have a new ride opening next year. Can you tell us a little bit about that one, Ricardo? Yeah, I mean, um, that's another ride that we're pretty really excited about. It's going to be, next year is going to be a year when we'll uh, not have that many rides opening because of, of the fact that, yeah, there was a gap year for, for COVID last year. Uh, so, and but we're just really just excited about Phoenix. It's it's kind of like the the new generation of the new generation of the, the sit down uh, looping coasters. Uh, it has a number of different elements, and it, 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 it's just massive, right? So the, the ride is on track to open well before the summer next year. Pretty excited about it. You have a few projects going on across the board for the number of coasters that are opening. There's a few that are Vacomas, but yep. we're. A couple, one in the United States, right? Is that one you can talk about it much yet? For the Probably one that Iowa? <laughs> no, I didn't think so. <laughs> but uh, yeah, hopefully soon. I have to ask, right? Uh, I love, <laughs> always ask. We'd love to talk more yeah. about all these projects that are coming up. Yeah. And we're working on a lot of projects, right? Um, as I said, the, the, the COVID, of course, affected the whole industry, but it's really good to, to be here at IAP again and, and re, be like together and see that the, the industry is rebounding, right? So we are working on a number of different projects, mostly for openings in, within the next like 12 to 24 months. Uh, and next year at IAPA, we'll have some, some big announcements as well uh, for you guys. So, uh, but yeah, unfortunately, we, we can't really talk about all of that. That's all right. You won't be disappointed. Yeah, exactly. Very good to know. But we know how it is. You have to leave it to the park to make sure their marketing exactly. is in yeah. place. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. But, 
and I imagine y'all have worked very hard during this show. Lots of meetings, lots going on here on the floor. Yeah. Has it right. been good traffic through the booth throughout the week? Excellent, week? excellent. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, this has been mostly uh, for the America's market, right? For, uh, because we don't see a lot of cash uh, visitors here this year due to the travel restrictions, but it's been a very successful year. All our clients in the States are here, so we had meetings back to back most of the times during this week, so it's, it's great. It's just great to see everyone back. And especially this year, we had a, a, a really um, impressive uh, opening with the, the Phoenix at Dennis Wonderwheel as well. We're pretty excited about that project. That project has been uh, extremely getting a lot of traction. A lot of people who rode the coaster provided uh, uh, excellent feedback. So we're, um, although it was a, a like last year was a challenging year, this year they were able to, to successfully open the, the ride, and it's it's just great. That is great, and it's wonderful to see installations of the Columbus coming to the United States. Right. We're glad to see that market expanding again because you have had so much success overseas. Right. Are you seeing the America's market be more open to the more innovative uh, designs that you've been bringing to Europe? Yeah, it's a it's a process. And we've been working on this for a couple of years, and then obviously COVID, with all its restrictions, didn't help. But uh, we really feel like on this show, we, we we saw the change. So things are kind of finally coming together, and uh, we're really looking forward to the future. Glad to hear that. That's wonderful to hear because it does. It's a long sales cycle. What is typical from the first time you have a conversation with somebody until their ride opens? What's the sales cycle look like? It's it can vary, right? But it, it's all the way from like 18 months to 36 or three years, in case there is no pandemic in between, of course. <laughs> but uh, I would say yeah, one and a half to three years would be a yeah the, the usual sales cycle from final conversations and final confirmations until the ride is up and running and over to the ball. Okay. So both of you have very different roles in helping a roller coaster open. Tell us a little bit about what your day is like. What do you do to move things forward? And what are your responsibilities? So my responsibility is sales, uh, mostly focused on, on the US. So we recently opened an office here in Orlando. Uh, and we're pretty excited, as Benjamin said, about the, the feedback from, from the local market in terms of this, bringing this new concept and this new rise that we open overseas now to the States. Uh, and my, I mean, we're always, we have a very dynamic uh, uh, working structure, right? So uh, I travel a lot uh, for, for business, to visit clients, to visit existing projects, to visit potential projects. So, uh, and in terms of like the, the daily activities, it's mostly like, of course, we have a lot of communication, especially nowadays with, with uh, the remote communication with teams and stuff. We have meetings internally uh, to talk about these new possibilities, but also the existing projects. Uh, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Every day is a, is a different uh, day at work, I would say. So that's very dynamic. <laughs> Yeah, my days are, are a little different, I guess. Uh, I work from the main office back in the Netherlands, and I run a, a small team, the concept engineering team for Roma. Uh, a little team of four guys, and uh, we are responsible for coming up with new attractions, new designs, trying to fill gaps in our portfolio and seize opportunities that, that we see out there, um, but also the custom designs. So based on the rights that we have in our portfolio, Clients will come to us and say, "Can you change up this and that? And can we make something that fits this this area or this, this specific purpose?" Um, and that's what we do. So it's uh, day to day. It's very different. It's the whole process from uh, supporting the sales team and getting out, meeting with the clients, and trying to find their needs and filling that in creatively. And maybe the next day I work on uh, on a project that has been like, going on a little bit longer, and we're much more into the details. We're much more into the physics and trying to get the coaster to work technically and of course commercially and financially everything needs to work. It's like a giant jigsaw puzzle. So uh, it, it kind of depends what I do on a day uh, depending on what kind of product I you work, whether it's an internal development or whether it's client specific and what type of client that is and what phase we are. So 
when business slowed down during the pandemic and you were not out there in the field, did you find that y'all were able to stop and use that time productively to do other things? And that idea we all have, oh, I wish I could get to that, but I never get there. Did y'all find that happen for you in the office too? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So there were definitely like a couple of weeks or a couple of months that things were very, very slow, at least on the, the market pool side. So there was no one calling us, can you do this new right for me? So we really used that time effectively to, to basically rework and restudy our current portfolio to see what, what can we add, what, what's not there, and what can be regarded as low-hanging fruit. Because we didn't want to jump on developments that will take another five or six years to get a new ride out there. We wanted to be ready with something that is budget conscious, but can also be turned around relatively quickly. Because what we knew from 2015 in Asia when SARS hit, is that once you get out of such an epidemic or epidemic, then the demand will just shoot up. So you have to be ready for that moment. So we really added like a whole bunch of, of new smaller rights to our portfolio that have high marketing value but could be turned around real quickly. So when you look at your portfolio, if there's any poster that you can install, which one is your dream to get it installed? What are you working the hardest to get out there? That's a, very, that's a good question, actually. <laughs> yeah. Because I can't complain. We're doing, we're doing pretty well. Uh -huh. and we're getting some traction. So all the new ideas are at least being considered. So I might just name a ride and then just end up building, being built anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. Stuff that I would still like to work on would be something extremely custom, customized to terrain. So if I would get like a template that is out in a natural terrain and you basically just have to use an after follow, that would be uh, that would be high on my list. I like that. I mean that's some of the ones we enjoy riding the most too, right. because it right. is so customized and so different. I think about a few that that, that landscaping and that terrain really makes all the difference. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yes. And maybe a combination of different elements that we have in our new uh, rise that we recently uh, came up with because each one of them uh, has a specific element that is unique so if we can start combining these elements together into a new ride that would be just, just great. So. That's fun. And I, you know, y'all compliment I imagine the office so much because you are taking the sales call and then passing it off so you both are getting to take bounce creativity off of each other. You know, what can right. I sell and what can I build? Yeah, it's like a daily conversation. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I imagine that's very fun. So what, and we know that y'all have big goals for the United States and getting a lot more. Are there other goals five years down the road y'all want to help Vacoma achieve? I think first of all our consolidation uh, with the new uh, generation of products in the States. That's a, that's a goal uh, number one. Uh, but I would say ideally we would have each and every uh, single new product from our portfolio uh, built and installed here. And five years seems to be a uh, realistic uh, time frame for that. I like that. We would like to experience your whole portfolio in the United States as well. Right. <laughs> yes. Good to hear. <laughs> Absolutely. Wonderful, y'all. I really appreciate it. I hope you at home are all enjoying our look into the app expo. And I really appreciate you taking some time out because we hate to ask for your time because we don't want you to not sell a roller coaster for us. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. But thank you all. It's always a pleasure to see you both. And I hope you all enjoy the expo from home.